lived on the hard, I had all kinds of shoes. Dressy, casual, heels, sneakers, you name it. But on the boat, I could buy with only three pair of shoes. Okay, maybe four if you want to count my swim fin booties. Hi there, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I share my suggestion for the only shoes a cruiser really needs. Now, today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Lunatech, makers of the hydration spray bottle, odor-free dishcloth, and self-cleaning washcloth. Lunatech offers practical gear designed to save water and reduce waste. I use them all the time. A water bottle that doubles as a sprayer? Yes. A dishcloth that doesn't get stinky? Oh, absolutely. Visit lunatechgear.com to learn more and use code BOATGALLY to save 10% on everything. Lunatech, innovative gear for your outdoor adventures. Okay, let's talk about shoes. Now, once upon a time, I had lots of shoes. Lots and lots of shoes. Dress shoes, business heels, casual shoes, beach shoes, winter boots, and so on. Since 2002, just after we moved on to Tal, our first cruising boat, I've only had three pairs of shoes at any one time. Well, I should amend that. I also have a pair of sailing boots that double as my fin booties. So maybe you could say I have four pairs. Dave has basically the same thing. But I do get asked a lot about what shoes I have and what do I recommend. So here goes. First and foremost are Keen sandals. I've worn Keens since 2005 for, I don't know, 95, 98% of what I do. Obviously, I love them. So a fair portion of this is going to be about why they work so well for boat life. You can see a link to them in the show notes and take a look because you can see some of the features. But up until the last pair that I bought, I always wore the Newport H2, and that's what Dave still wears. My latest pair is the Whisper model. They were only made for women. All of the models with H2 are designated to go in and out of the water. Perfect for wading like to and from the dinghy, walking on the beach, things like that. Several other models, such as the Whisper, are also designed for water. They don't stretch out when they're wet. They don't get moldy. They don't create blisters when they're worn wet on a hike. They're good when you're wading in places without a nice sandy bottom. Almost all Keen sandals are what are called hiking sandals, meaning that they have the support needed for all but the most rugged hiking. And we certainly put them to the test while cruising the Sea of Cortez. The soles are thick and thorn resistant, a quality I came to value after taking a simple walk in Baja with Crocs. Pretty much every single one of the thorns that I came anywhere near actually punctured right through the sole of Crocs. They are simply not up to the task of being in any thorny places. Now, one of the best features about the Keen models is the toe guard. It really prevents a lot of tripping injuries and toe injuries. Now, admittedly, it's a little bit harder to shake a small pebble or a bit of gravel out of the sandals, but overall, that's less of a problem than toe injuries and the thorns that I kicked with my previous Tevas. Because of the toe guard, I was able able to wear them while hiking over a lava field in Hawaii. Keens are the only brand of sandals that the guide company will let you wear. Otherwise, you had to wear sneakers or hiking boots. Now, back in 2004-2005, several cruising friends recommended the Keen Newport H2s to me after that thorn incident with the Crocs, but I resisted for over a year due to the cost. Nearly $100 for a pair of sandals? Come on! I finally broke down and bought a pair when I realized that the cheapies only lasted a few weeks with the abuse I gave them. Shoes today, it seems generally, aren't designed for people who walk just about everywhere. I've decided that Keens actually are a good deal. A pair lasts me six to nine months of pretty much constant wear and then become my paint shoes. Now, one thing that I particularly like is what I call field repairability. If anything in the Keens sandal fails, it tends to be the stitching that holds the woven fabric to the neoprene lining, and the shoes then get loose but not unwearable. A bit of dental floss or sail thread and a needle, and they're good as new again. 
I've never had the shock cord lacing break, but if I did, it could be tied back together. We always have spare shock cord on board if I needed to totally replace it. Repairability was critical when we were cruising in the Sea of Cortez, Mexico, because there just simply weren't shoe stores nearby. And the ones in the bigger towns only carried dressy sandals for women, not true walking sandals. Other sandals that tend to fail when the uppers pull out of the sole are not nearly as easy to repair. Now, a quick tip here. If you're going to be cruising Mexico, take several spare pairs of sandals with you, particularly if you're a woman. Women's recreational sandals like Tevas, Keens, that kind of thing, are almost impossible to find. And it's hard to find men's sandals in sizes over about, say, a U.S. size 9. Dave, who wears an 11 or 12, had an impossible time finding any there. Several years ago, I bought the first pair of the Whisper model because I didn't like the colors then available in the Newport H2s for women. I've been wearing the Whispers for, I don't know, probably four years, maybe five years now. I really like the Whispers even better than the H2s. They're not as heavy or as clunky looking, and they seem to be giving me every bit as much support and toe protection. They have the same really good non-slip sole as the H2s, and while the soles are black, they've never marked a boat that I've been on. Now, it used to be that you could buy Keens online for maybe 25 to 30% less than in the stores, but that's pretty much gone by now. If you wear a really odd size or willing to live with an unusual color, you may find a pair that's maybe 10% off. Typically, I buy mine from Amazon just because it's so easy to get things shipped there and they have huge color and size selections. There's links to those in the show notes. Okay, so that's one pair of shoes that I have. Second pair of shoes that I have are sneakers, or you might call them running shoes. Once in a while, it actually gets chilly where I am. Usually, that means I put a pair of socks with my Keens, but occasionally I need something more, so I get out my sneakers. If it's that cold, I'm usually wearing jeans so they fit right in. Once in a while, I even wear my sneakers for a hike or a long walk, but it's pretty rare since I discovered Keens with the toe guards. Dave's second pair of shoes is also his running shoes. He wears them about as often as I do. If you're going to leave your sneakers on the boat full time, don't make the mistake I did when we began cruising on k If there's any real leather on your shoes, it will mold and then disintegrate. Only buy shoes, including your sneakers, that have no real leather. And then the third pair of shoes that I have are what I call dress shoes. Now, I wear dressy shoes maybe three or four times a year. Most of our socializing is very, very casual. And for me, a pair of somewhat dressy sandals in a neutral color and style works well for all occasions. I keep the heels low. After wearing flats most of the time, high heels are dangerous for me. And frankly, they're just uncomfortable now. Here too, the no real leather rule applies. My current dress sandals are wide black elastic bands with low heels. They're chosen for their ability to go with just about anything. Espadrilles in a neutral color also work well. It's a far cry from when I used to have dozens of pairs of pump, each specially matched to certain outfits. Now, Dave wears dress shoes just about as often as I do. He doesn't have a suit on the boat, so dress shoes means something to go with a pair of nice slacks. He has a much harder time finding something without real leather than I do. Several years ago, he found a pair that are styled similarly to topsiders, but made with synthetic leather. They work. Bottom line, neither of our cruising boats have been particularly large, and what space we do have, we would rather use for things like spare parts, tools, maybe even a bottle of wine. We'd rather spend our money on those things also. When we first started cruising on Ketal, we both way overestimated how many pairs of shoes and how much clothing we needed. Within just a few months, we'd cut way back to just three pairs of shoes. I was shocked to discover I didn't miss having more. Okay, so that's this week's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast. Hopefully, you found it interesting and informative. If so, be sure to subscribe and tell your friends about us. Take care. Until next week, then. Mm-hmm.